This lecture is on banking panics. Following our lecture on the banking multiplier, it's easy to see why a bank panic and a bank run, bank panics and bank runs, can happen in this system. This is because it is fragile. Let's review super quickly. The central bank conducted an open market operation, putting $100 into this person's pocket. They deposited it into the Fed, into a bank. That bank then held 10% as reserves. The Fed, by the way, usually tells the banks by law what their required reserve ratio has to be. Now, a bank can hold more, that's no problem. But the central bank or the monetary authority in an economy will tell those banks what they must hold, the required reserve ratio. Sometimes for required reserves, I'll put a little star to remind us that it's the required. Banks can hold more, but they can't hold less. In this system, which is called a fractional reserve system, the bank then takes a fraction of the deposits, holds them as reserves, and lends the rest out. So the $100 stays in as a deposit, $10 physically stays in reserves, and $90 physical dollars gets lent out. This person takes that money, deposits it in another bank, or maybe the same bank. The bank then must hold 10% at least in reserves physically, and it can lend out the rest. This process had continues, and we found that the final amount of money is the first deposit that goes into the banks times one over the reserves. There's no cash here. There's a hundred. This is one over 0.1. So we got a hundred times 10 or $1,000 in the system. Well, that looks great. The problem comes when this bond trader comes back or this person comes back. It doesn't matter which one you pick. But let's start with this person. They made a $100 deposit because they got their cash from the bond trade and then they wanted to hold it and spend it, you know, on the weekend at a hotel or whatever they wanted to do with it. So Friday rolls around and they decide to go take their money back out. They need it as cash and they're going to go on a vacation for the weekend. So this person shows up to get her money back out of the bank and says, I want my $100. The bank says, I'm sorry, I only have $10 in the bank. And the person says, but I have an account here with $100. Give me the rest of my money. The bank says, I can't. One thing the bank can do, it could call this loan back. So now this person who took a loan out from the bank gets a phone call. And the bank says, I'm sorry, Joe, I gave you 90 bucks to buy whatever. We need that money back today. Now, a couple of things happen. One, he's probably already spent the money and it's already in his bank. Or um, he's already spent the money and he can't pay it back, so this bank can't do it. Or he just deposited it in his bank and so he could withdraw it, which he's really not going to want to do. But then this bank says, I'm sorry, Joe, we only have $9. We don't have the 90 very quickly, everyone starts to panic because nobody, when they go back and check their bank, finds that the total deposits they left are in the bank anymore. When everybody realizes this, everybody here starts to go to their bank and demand their money back. But all of these people have a total of $1,000 in deposits at the bank that they're all demanding back. The bank, however, collectively only has 100 physical dollar bills. As a result, there is a massive panic, and as banks try and call back their loans, banks fail over and over and over, closing down, going out of business, liquidating to give money back to this guy, to give it back to this bank, to give back to this lady who, who rightly wants her $100 back. This gives us the first role of the Fed, the monetary authority in most economies 
is a lender of last resort. In most economies, two things. The banks keep their reserves in part at the Federal Reserve, which is sort of like the bank of the banks. And two, the Federal Reserve, when this kind of a banking crisis shows up, will inject money. So this bank says, we have to pay this person $100. We only have 10. We need money. So the U.S. Fed injects money into their reserve accounts, puts it at 100 you know, I don't know, $200. So they have a ton of extra money so they can pay that person back and still hold reserves, for example, just hypothetically. So you can see how the crisis can occur. What multiplies things up can contract just as fast and cause a crisis. And you can see why the Fed's role as a lender of last resort can be important in alleviating a crisis because when it happens, they can put money into each bank directly so that they do have the cash to pay these people back now when this person tries to get their money back, it's there. So they don't call their friends and tell them, hey, the banks are out of money. The panic quickly alleviates and dissipates. And once things are stable again, the banks can go back into, into normal business.